In today's video, we're gonna talk about five ways that you can stay warm and whilst running in colder weather. getting colder out there, winter's creeping in, but of course we need to keep up the running. How do we do that when it starts to get a bit cooler? Can be a little bit more tricky. Today, I'm gonna to go through some ways that we can do that. I live in Helsinki in Finland for the last five years and winter temperatures go down to minus 25 degrees sometimes. So I think I've got a good enough understanding how to dress when it gets cold. And I really wanted to share with you some tips and tricks how you can have comfortable running whilst it's cold or weather. But when it's cold outside, it's really easy to go out real quick because you want to warm up even more. But as a result of that, you tend to sweat more and expend more energy, and then you have more moisture within those clothes. So then when you do slow down because you're a little bit gassed out and you went out too quickly, that moisture stays there and makes you feel a lot colder. Yeah, those first 10 minutes or so, they might be a little bit challenging and cool, but if you're in it for the long run, pun intended, and you want to stay at a comfortable temperature for that whole hour to two hours, they're not going out too fast within those 10 to 15 minutes is really going to help. I'm not telling you to go and lie down in front of a radiator or go and sit in the sauna. What I'm saying here is that you should warm up the body, the muscles, the blood to get that flowing around the body before you head out. It can just be doing like 10 air squats before you head out, doing some leg swings and doing some mobility stuff, a few jumping jacks, whatever tickles your fancy. Doing those few exercises is probably gonna help you warm your body up, get the blood flowing. And then when you're going outside, it's not just a big shock to the system and you're trying to engage that whole system of yours and to support this if you think about it when you do go out for a run those first 15 to 20 minutes are probably the coldest right I think most people are gonna agree with me there and then you end up warming up and that is one part of the reason that we are warming up the body I guess I mean it's in the title isn't it so doing a few exercises is not only gonna be good for helping you to warm up your body if you're doing some intensity and in some session what do pro runners normally do? They warm the body up, they prime the body ready to be able to go and put out an effort. So warming your body up a little bit before you head out, it's only gonna help in multiple ways. No, don't go and do you know like a big workout before it because then you're not gonna be able to do the running. Having the correct clothing to be able to go out into the elements in different times of the year. There are two quick rules of thumb that I would probably say, but when you start running, the wind comes onto you, or if it's just naturally a windy day, it feels so cold. So having some wind protective layer, like a, a jacket, maybe even trousers, if it is really cold out there, can be a really intelligent idea. And the second thing is to dress for the temperature and not the weather. If it's zero degrees, add 10 degrees onto that and that's probably how it's going to feel when you start running. You do have to take this with a little bit of pinch of salt on either side of this but let's say it's four degrees outside and it's pretty windy. Once you're out there running and done like half an hour of it it's probably going to feel around 12 to 14 degrees celsius for you. Obviously then if we go up into the 30s and the 40s or down to like minus 35 those 10 degrees they're going to feel pretty much the same. In terms of the colder weather the upper body is one of the parts that's gonna you know feel quite a lot of it our legs are moving so you know all the muscles and the blood flow down there is pretty much working already or on it fine on its own whereas the upper body and our extremities like our hands and wrists and neck they can get real cool having good quality sports clothes is obviously going to help most sports clothes are synthetic and synthetic fabrics tend to hold less liquids in them so when you're sweating whereas cotton like this t-shirt here if i was wearing this when i was running it will hold the water and hold it for a longer period of time so a synthetic layer that can push the liquid away and not retain it as much is going to be beneficial here. Here in the Nordics it can get pretty cold in the winter and a good strategy is to wear a base layer underneath that hugs tight skin tight to the body. What, it, what this really does is it takes the sweat away from the body quickly and on top of that you wear a windproof layer you're creating a chamber between the jacket and the base layer for air to sort of like stay and be warm in that area and here you're not having too many layers to keep the moisture in there and you're probably just overheat if you had like three four layers on. On a lower half wearing some skin tight running tights 
they can really help retain a little bit of heat. And as I said, your legs are in full force anyway. Well, they should be if you're running. If you do want to and it gets really cold, you can then put on a windproof layer over the top of that. I have done that myself when it's been like minus 25 degrees Celsius. Just makes things a little bit more comfortable if you're out there doing a longer and an easier run. And a really great tip is to, in cooler weather, just tuck your shirt into your shorts. It really does help a little bit. And then when you get hot enough, just untuck it. Well, the hands can get pretty cold when you're out there running. They're moving in the wind all the time. Unfortunately, even when you do wear some gloves, they don't help. So kind of what we're talking about layering with clothes, it's the same with your hands, but in a little bit of a different way. So here you're gonna layer up without layers. But what I'm saying here is wearing mittens instead of gloves that have fing individual finger sockets. What are they called? Individual finger sleeping bags. But if you wear mittens, basically what's happening is that your fingers are all together. And as a result, the blood flow and the warmth can heat up each other finger. And so using mittens is really helping those fingers to stay closer to together to warm up. And it's pretty easy to scrunch them up and you know bring them into the palm. This solution has worked really well for me. And when it gets really cold, like minus 30 degrees here in Finland, then you can just add one base layer underneath those mittens to help also. Also, as the clothing layers, having a windproof set of gloves is also really gonna help. It sounds like a little bit of an obscure one. How can picking a route help you be warmer when you're running? Let's say you're looking out the window, it's raining and really windy. We've all been there and you're like, ah, oh, I really can't be bothered to go out there. It's gonna be so cold. And you have a housing estate or a forest nearby. Maybe those types of places will be a good place to go. So you're gonna get a little bit more protection from the wind if you're running in the forest or a housing state than if you're in the open air on the beach or in some fields. Then the wind and the rain is, well, you've got no place to hide from them. But in those other places, yeah, they will still be there. It's not gonna be like, you know, a glorious Caribbean beach with a cocktail and ginger beer. Oh, gosh. But those places will offer a little bit of protection from the elements and in return, keep you a little bit drier or keep you a little bit warmer. Well, I don't think it's gonna keep you warmer, but it's not gonna make you cooler, let's say that. I'm just in the middle of filming. Can I call you back in five or something minutes? Okay. A little bit of a bonus tip, if you didn't start your run at home and you went to see a friend or drove somewhere, have a dry set of upper body clothes with you. So once you finish your run, you can rip off those upper body layers, put a t-shirt and a jumper on. And there basically what you're doing is removing those layers which have got some of that sweat and then you just put those warm dry clothes on. It's gonna be really nice and toasty there. Well, yeah, I hope those tips are helpful for you. Um, the biggest thing here for me is I want people to go out there running and enjoy it all times of the year it is possible trust me i think this is one of the key messages that you have to go out there and try things you know you don't have to be perfect to start but you have to start to be perfect all of these things i've learned the hard way and done it all by myself i've shared these little tips with you so what i like is you go out there do some running and i'm sure these little things will probably help you and you'll learn a little bit along the way for yourselves. Now here's a really important part of the video. Leave your comment down below with your tip because anybody watching this video can see it. And I think it's really important that we are a community and you probably have some really great tips and I want everybody else to see them as well. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.